Okay, so today we're making apple crumble. So you'll need to collect two Granny Smith apples and peel the skin off those. So just working your way around the apple. Hopefully your peel is sharper than mine. Just getting rid of all that skin. That'll do. Just get that a little bit. All right. Then using your wooden chopping board, not your red one, because we're not cooking with meat today. Nice big knife, chopping straight down the middle of the apple. Flat sides down. Then chopping from the tip of the apple to the bottom of the apple, so you're quartering the apple. Once you stand it back up, you'll see that the core's still in there, and that's the bit that we want to just chop out and get rid of. Pop that aside. Chop out the core. Might be a little bit of seed left in there. Get rid of that. Chop down the middle of the apple. Get rid of the core. Okay, once you've done that, you'll need to do that to your second apple as well. I'm only going to demonstrate doing it to one apple. You then need to chop it into smaller bits. So, chop them into eighths. And then once more down the middle. Making sure that your apples are all about the same size so that they cook evenly and you don't end up with bits of apple that are too soft and soggy and bits of apples that aren't cooked at all. All right, so making sure you clean up as you go. Get rid of any of the scraps into the compost bin. Then your two apples go into a microwave safe container. Okay, so your plastic container, not your metal containers. So into the big plastic bowl. And into that goes two tablespoons of water, which I've previously measured and popped into this jug. And half a tablespoon of sugar into the bowl. And some clothes. Now these are very strong flavoured so you only need the recommended amount which is two. So that's one and two. Just give that a little bit of a, a stir to make sure that all the sugar has been stirred through and the water's covered the whole mixture. Then you need to put that into your microwave. Now, all of the microwaves in this kitchen are different. So if you're not sure how to function your microwave, you need to check with your teacher. So the apple goes into the microwave and you need to have it in there for eight minutes on high. I'll clear what's already on there and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you now need to collect two ramekins from day number seven, and you need to just lightly coat the ramekin with a bit of spray oil. Now, the reason why I'm spraying over the sink is any of the spray that doesn't go into the ramekin is only gonna go into the sink. If I sprayed it over the floor, any of the spray that didn't go into the ramekin will go on the floor and it will become very slippery. Okay, so while the apple is in the microwave, I'm just gonna demonstrate what the partner will have been doing whilst you were preparing the apple. So the partner's gonna be doing the topping. For that, you will need some coconut, two tablespoons of coconut, two tablespoons of rolled oats, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a quarter of a cup of self-raising flour, and two tablespoons of butter. Now the butter will already have been portioned for you. All you need to do is just chop it into smaller bits because we're going to be doing a method called rubbing in. So into your large bowl, goes your flour and your butter only. 
and then using your fingertips, so make sure your hands are nice and clean, using your fingertips to just smush that butter into the flour. The reason why we only use our fingertips is because our fingertips are not as hot as the palm of our hands. We don't want to melt the butter, we just want to smush it. If we use the palm of our hands and smush it up like that, there is a chance you're going to melt the butter, which we don't want. So just rubbing the butter into the flour until it's crumbly. Then you need to mix in your two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of oats, and two tablespoons of coconut. Now seeing my hands are already nice and mucky, I may as well just use my hands to continue rolling that, or rubbing that in, until you end up with a crumbly mixture that the butter is completely mixed through. Just like that. So there won't be any separation of ingredients, it should all be mixed up together. Okay, so the apple's now been cooked. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir and divide the mixture into the two ramekins. Now, then you get your crumble topping and again, just sprinkle that on top. So half the mixture for one ramekin and the other half for the other ramekin. So continue filling it up. You might have to just push it down a little bit so that it doesn't overflow everywhere. Now to make it easier to remove these from the oven once they're cooked, what you need to do, let's pop that on top, what you need to do is get a tray from bay one and pop both the ramekins while they're still cool onto the tray. And that way when you go to remove it from the oven, you don't have to hold onto two hot ramekins, you just have to pull the tray out. Okay, so my oven's been preheating since the start of this demonstration. It's on 190 degrees. So I'm just gonna pop that into the oven and allow that to cook. Now the way we know if that's done is it becomes golden brown on top. And also we check the time that it goes into the oven. It needs 20 minutes in the oven. So after 20 minutes, it should be golden brown. Make sure you check the clock when it goes in so you know when it needs to come out.